Okay, thank you very much. So, first of all, I want to thank the National Agency for Spectrum Columbia, uh, to Carla and to Diana for having me here with you. It's a pleasure for me and really an honor to represent this uh, working group that we have conformed to carry out this project, denominated 5G Resilience and Human Health in the Colombian Context. And that uh, we'll be discussing through a partial report, preliminary report of results, uh, the project still ongoing. And this is presentation of the project and some uh, results of numeric representation, the experimental framework, and a perception study that we have developed. Now, in respect to the project, we can say that it is a project that is um, uh, comes as a result of a call for research uh, that was made in 2021 by Annie, uh, originally in 2020. And this contract or project is uh, started in 24 March of this year. So we have been working now for nearly nine months. And there is a group, a working group, um, that trying to address the different topics covered by the project. We have here professionals. They are working on development of a physical and atomic model to carry out experiments, also inert models. Ms. Fernando Pineda and the designer Maria Patricia Barajas. We have a team working on simulations, electromagnetic, high current. Uh, Jorge Luis Duco, Marlon Patiño, Sebastián Ramírez, and Duvan Agudelo. We have another group in the in development of the experimental model, Andres Gallegos, Santiago Rodrigo, Javier Arevalo, Sebastián Chávez, and Javier Martínez. And on the other hand, we have work carried out in perception by uh, this is marketing expert Santiago Pernal, and Juan Camilo Vargas. And the overall management of the project um, is Edwin Ferrer, an engineer, Javier Ojeda, and Aquinas uh, coordinator. And there is a technical scientific um, directorate uh, led by Francisco Roman, Manuel Perez from Javiana University, Francisco Roman from National University, Director of uh, Electromagnetic Compatibility, and on Medicine, Perception and Epidemiology, we have Juan Camilo Vargas, and finally, myself, uh, Javier Araki. So let's start by presenting some considerations and results that we have obtained so far uh, in uh, from simulation, which we believe is fundamental because at the end of the day will allow us to have uh, highly accurate results that wouldn't be possible by traditional experimental methods. Initially, we define a working flow for the simulations. Um, also, let me size this well. So we define initially a series of scenarios of exposure to electromagnetic fields where consider the way and users use the mobile device. Uh, it could be located uh, here uh, near the body uh, next to the hip, both in men and women. It could be in position of call. Uh, it could be in position of video call or reading mode, or it could be in position not in respect to the mobile device, but in respect to the base station, which is an uh, infrastructure associated to this technology, uh, to this uh, 5G, let's say. So once these scenarios are defined, once uh, characterized the different scenario, a very technical level, considering uh, power, field, uh, um, polarization, uh, the band that's being utilized, etc. And these parameters are quite important to conduct the analysis. This presupposes as well that the tool being used is validated and uh, the working flow adopted is validated as well because these tools require the uh, use of a great number of parameters and it's important to 
to be very sure about the accuracy of the results that will be obtained. So that is important, the validation. And after that, computational and atomic models are defined. Uh, we'll explain that later. And what we're looking for is to represent the anatomic characteristics that are relevant. Uh, let's say for non-desirable interaction or harm to health. And after that, and once we have parametrized this scenario, we generate a model, uh, part of the electromagnetic simulation, where we are, uh, let's say, working with mobile devices and infrastructure. This is electromagnetic simulation. And the result of this electromagnetic simulation basically is a field level inside the body and also the specific rate of absorption. This information is the use for the thermal uh, value of this, of temperature, and then we have uh, the results are there compared with the recommendations that we have in this case. In the GLIP of the edition of uh, 2020, and then we have there the deployment that we may have, especially in millimetric uh, waves. Now, speaking of the selection of the computational model and the software tool that is implemented by us, we are using a software that is called SIM for Life, that is specifically developed for the analysis of electromagnetic fields on the human body and their impact. And here we have two examples of anatomic models one masculine, one feminine. And we see how they have a great level of detail that actually represent all the body structures. And they're done so with the parameters, the dielectric parameters, the electromagnetic fields, the thermal fields, the mechanical fields, and a tool that is fundamental for the study that we are carrying out and that is using other realms like our, for example, the therapies based on electromagnetic therapy and the diagnosis that we have, which would be like magnetic nuclear resonance and so on. So it is a very used tool. And within this tool, we have this group of models that are part of the so-called uh, virtual population version three that is actually done by the ITIS Foundation, which they compile very exhaustively all the known parameters of the body tissues and we're talking about more than a hundred types of tissues with their respective uh, parameters with a very broad band uh, that we have of these results and uh, that we're going to present partially here today. So what we wish to show is a scenario that is very common of the preliminary ones that actually creates in a more and the higher ones of the ones that we have considered. So here, we have some parameters. Let's just say that, not to go much into detail, we're simulating the band 3.5 gigahertz, which is the range of frequency one foreseen for the deployment of the 5G systems in Colombia. And now we have an entry one, which is the one applied to the antenna, a type of antenna that is specific. And here we have the parameters of thermal simulations, then I'm going to go more to the results. And here we have initially some sort of um, views around the maximum point and this, the ones that is detected for this case, that is it's right on the ear and you have in the outside of the ear. It's as expected, which is in closest level there to the mobile there, but the level there is of there we have are way below the one specified in the standard of the basic one. Here we have a color scale that actually goes for four watts per kilogram and actually it's actually double of what the restriction would have for this area of the body. And let's just say that this appreciation of this level of absorption is very low. It's actually confirmed when we go and do the, ana the thermal analysis. In other words, we analyze the dynamics of how this heat comes to the body and how it's distributed through the natural corporal processes. So it's actually very interesting there that we have this uh, SIM for life actually includes all of these uh, basic mechanisms that we have of heat dissipation. And that heat has a tendency to divide 
or tends to be uniform in an area is actually to some effects like percussion. This is actually the heat dissipation through blood flow uh, into the tissue. And it actually includes the interaction of thermal uh, effects to the environment. And what we're seeing here is actually some view plants, the, 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 the phase heat, and we're talking about the maximum levels of 0 0.19 degrees Celsius. And this horizontal transversal cut here, the person is looking forward. And here we see a temperature increase that is actually very, very slight. We're talking about 0 0.18 degrees Celsius. And this in the area of the ear, but in the other more sensitive areas of the body within the head, we have a change in temperature that actually doesn't get to 0 0.1 degrees centigrade. A very similar result that we have for another cut of the view. And here we can see the portions of the shoulder, but once again, we see that they're subjective to this region that are extremely low. So these are results that we have here allow us to evidence that uh, as a, uh, on the very conservative positions here, they actually they include the natural mechanisms of heat dissipation, like sweating and others that are even more advanced that will actually help to reduce the temperature. We see that we verify here that, well, of the standard and so on, that actually the, the, the ones that are for 2020 and so on, that this level really doesn't have any impact. So we're going from, this is to give an idea as to, let's just say that the idea of the project is actually to connect academia here, in this case with the regulator and also with the community. So we are also seeking to publish the results to show them and to show part of these results will be present in the article. We actually sent it to the EU CAP vision uh, to see if they get published we'll see there it will have the final versions of all the study that we have there now i'm going to speak about the design of the experimental stage of the experiment and here we have like a setup is how we foresee of having this and really we um, we have done this very much based and what is the state of the art in this type uh, this type of um studies we have an anatomic model and then we have a field review within the anatomic model that is actually made by a container and a fluid that is modeling the characteristics of the tissues within that model and actually it simulates a dielectric constant and their losses in order to present a, a condition that is the most approximate to human reality here we have our emitter here we have the emitter depending of the commuter we can have a mobile phone or we can be simulating the field that one of them generates through an infrastructure and this is going to sweep it there and is going to capture in the three-dimensional space for this SARS level now in respect of the traditional setup our proposal here includes firstly the use or better yet the sweep the scan that is done manually by a human operator is actually different from the robotic process because as a robotic arm usually we do so by by because of cost and also by flexibility in our setup and that means that we should do a follow-up an optical follow-up of the position so that we can correlate those field measurements with a position that's in the three-dimensional space. And here we have an optical one that is actually going to follow this through some markets. And then on the other side, we have here computers that are going to be controlling the emitter, the receptor, and also the part of capturing the position so that we can obtain the measurements as is expected. And here we have the setup. Once it's viewed, at the systems level where we have them involved and then we have a computer here which is running MATLAB and it's actually doing the control of the position record or position recording with the different cameras and a computer and then on the other side we have a computer that is in charge of the transmission and the reception of the signal and here we have the other part of the hardware which is the field uh, coil 
on some optical reviewers that actually have the position to review the position right. In respect of this experimental setup, uh, an important part of this is actually the development of the anatomic model. So here with the intent of actually have an appropriation of the knowledge of this technology, we propose that the development with an institution actually have these models that are basic standards that there exist and that you can buy them already made and run and then we can complement them you know, let's just say with the availability of their model and so on so we're working really in a big team that actually includes the Javeriana University and the National University of Colombia where the Javeriana actually has an anatomic standard model and the respective materials but actually here we have is what they wish to do is actually to have their own model that can be compared with that one that they have there, that standard that we have. So, so it's based on the local technology of many keys. It started from a real model, and this is a person that we use as a model, and from that person we develop this container that on the front actually looks very much all the anatomic detail, and is very skinny, very so very thin so that we can actually do the container where we'll put the fluid materials and so on this maniki was subjected to a 3d scanning so that there can be a three-dimensional model on the one hand and we can reference therefore the metering that we do in the experimental stage to actually understand as to which area of the body refers to all these measurements and then another one is to do a variation through simulation of the results that we're obtaining there. So the in the experimentation is going to be a very useful tool to validate the simulated results. Right, so here we have a setup of what this mannequin is gonna look like and how we're gonna have it in a table that is already built. And then you have a cut with a silhouette. And once we deposit here, would that would enable us to, uh, to put the, the simulating fluid and then to do the med metering as we showed you in the prior slide. Right, and now to have these mixes this is our important aspects of here, we have a preparation of all these dielectric mixes, and then we have with standard documentation and so on that we're going to refer to. And uh, these processes are the sort of extensive process subject to error, subject to the need to do a lot of trial and error. And here we have, for example, the need to use a vacuum camera to eliminate uh, the excess of foam in the first mixture. So it's a tedious, lengthy process that were at the beginning were validated in this lab. Uh, this is the lab of the Pontificia Universidad Javeriana, and they have a device to actually measure the dielectric constant and the losses of these materials in a very broad band, about 15 gigahertz and so on. Here we have the sample. And this is a probe, uh, open coaxial uh, coil, and then to put at a certain depth, and actually has a, a vectorial network actually there. So it's actually to the replication of the wave that is issued through this coaxial cable. And this is how they determine the properties of the material. So this campaign is actually very important because that makes the validity of the results allows you to have a, a dielectric constant, and the ones that looks as similar as possible as the real material. So therefore, that is how the reference standard is as IEF, IEF 62209, and there you define the dielectric properties that a material should have when you simulate the human body, and it's a broad range here. And here we're going to focus here on the 3.5 gigahertz, which is the band where we're going to be running our experiments and in the range of the spectrum initially, that we have a low band. And here we have a comparison of some results with an important the dielectric lines with another ones that actually were less there in associated with the uh, freak, uh, with the frequency you have there. And it's a growing there with the frequency and it's worthwhile mentioning that in this particular results here, we have uh, some improvements that we need to make them there in this constant because it is actually a bit less than the desired constant. So it's an interesting result. We have the result, of, but because it's brief, I don't have much time here. I'm not going to show it to you, but it's worthwhile to note that we are being very, very careful to come to model that really does agree with the standard so that we can have some standards that can be of interest to validate any impacts there of this matter of health 
and seeing health and the uh, 5G uh, signals and part of the ex experiment setup, actually it has the generation and reception of waves. Here we have the one on the left that actually refers to the range of frequency one, and that's the 3.5 gig. Or we can use it as a base uh, measurement to use them in millimetric measurements with the setup that we have on the right. And here we're actually using a transceiver that actually uh, occupies in that band in particular and that they are connected. Um, and let's just say that in our original tests, we were using a very low field probe, but in the final exams, we will use a near field probe for X3D, for that it's available in the lab of the Javeriana University, it's available and we can make a field and for which we need to generate the support and it would enable us to mark the position and also some protection elements that will ensure them. So these uh, corrosion processes that actually go inside of the material that we're using to simulate the issues and again. And then we have their own support and uh, there we have uh, really the interest actually to have a very good visibility from all angles, the majority of the angles. So that's how we have the cameras. And with that, we actually can have a capture of the actual position with errors actually to even less than two millimeters. So let's just say that we're using MATLAB for the part of capturing uh, images. However, the algorithms of localization and computation are actually our own and then they are developed and thinking in our project and that is why the setup was carried out in a in a totally controlled illumination area so that we can uh, guarantee this part of the process all right so now we have a preliminary validation that we did of this setup we have a, a screen that is electromagnetically shielded and then you have here of the electron and then we have it that done here by the National University of Columbia. Here we have our two optical cameras, which enables us to track the position. We have a marker that we do a three leg market and a very, very sensitive probe that we have here as a conductor in the test of concepts and so on. And if we have the generation of the signal, and then we have here of the sweep of uh, this uh, once of broadband, that we have here operating in one of the ones of interest that we have here. Um, what we do is what we have here is actually one that is more uh, close to the setup with an operator and we're going to do it in the operator and the system is going to capture the suite that we did in these areas and then we have here to establish them the ones that are measured to integrate them, to integrate them, the profile of the field that we have there that is very close to what is expected. However, we have these elements that we need to improve. Our probe is not the ideal one in the action. And then and then uh, actually have to see, to use the probe that we had before is actually based on optical technology, which minimizes the interaction uh, with the original field and then with the environment to distort the least possible this field. So this is a very interesting validation because here it shows that the dynamic here of the two is actually working properly and also the generation system and the capture of the field. Okay. And then uh, we have there the development and, and these ones that were proposed for, the, for this one of 2022. And then we have there, and we will see um, the possibility of showing all the results with all the detail that is deserved. And now the last aspect that we wanted to discuss, the third, is actually the, the perception that we have. And we need to connect with people and with the regulator, and then it requires to have what is the interpretation there at the end. The, it, this is very important. It actually is um, has sort of greater value than what technical and scientific wants. And in order to capture this perception, we have a questionnaire of, let's just say, 20 questions where we query people about the use of their technology and their perception. And they actually 
compare it with the perception of people with a 5G technology taking as a reference, let's just say another technologies of prior regenerations and other technologies that are of a more common use and EPM and the like, that people are very familiarized with that and they have a totally different perception in spite of the fact that actually are based in a very similar technology. So right now what we have is some preliminary results that I'm going to share with you. In other words, it means that this service, actually we have tried to disseminate it through the institutional channels of all our allies, and then we have other universities and other contexts and so on. And here we have the link, and here we have the code of all the ones that are interested in participating there and to give their opinion about this technology. For the development of this initial perception, we developed the questionnaire, and then this questionnaire and the methodology the analysis methodology was actually subjected to the backing of the ethics committee and the medical faculty of the university, the National University of Columbia. And after they, they give their go ahead, we will open the debate. And here we're going to give you some preliminary results. And these results show somehow what is the community that mainly actually we have there. Um, the people that answer there is that they're part of the community one and then the distribution distribution of ages and then we have there of cities and uh, other educational levels so then we have you now allow us to correlate and then uh, with uh, the level of use of the technology and also with those that are of interest in the dissemination of these studies actually to disseminate what we have and actually to recommend uh, how to tackle the aspect of the deployment of infrastructure and use of the mobile terminals by the community in general i don't know if juan camilo is with us so that he can actually present this part juan camilo of the results perhaps not he's not here right Uh, no, Juan Camilo no, no, Juan Camilo is not with us, so please go ahead and give the results. And these results, really, I do not feel comfortable in presenting them. We have an, a statistical preliminary analysis in as far as the impact of the results in terms of perception. And then we can see them here, the perception of risk in respect of age. So now we have there that are interested, but I would not like to do that right now because there is an interesting conclusion that I could be able to share, but I don't feel comfortable in sharing this data. I believe Juan Camilo should do that. And it's respect of 5G technology. There is a position that actually one can say that it's ambivalent. And this is extensive to all the people that answer because all the people that answer value. Let's just say the benefits that are given by wireless technology and the ones that are going to give 5G and other technologies that give you 3G and 4G in their use. However, they have this reservation in respect of possible risks to health. And I think this is important. And the idea is for you to reconcile these two uh, issues that the information generation has a very scientific knowledge and the best way of the ones that we have there. And then, and then we have there uh, a greater knowledge of them we have there and then we have there and then we have of the use of the technology and then we have a resources there and then we have there and then we have there that actually is for the entire community with that i will conclude my presentation i'm very grateful for your attention thank you